Welcome back. It's been an incredibly hot and dry summer. We've seen statewide record-breaking heat. We've battled several grass fires. And, of course, a devastating drought is starting to lower lake levels. So what's in store for the rest of the summer? And what about the so-called drought buster, a hurricane or tropical storm? I spoke with our Texas state climatologist about what's going on. The images can't be ignored. And taking a walk through almost any place in southeast Texas, you'll find cracked earth lower water levels, and of course the heat. I asked John Nielsen Gammon, what's the cause? Well, in terms of the lack of rainfall, um, La Nina is the biggest contributing factor. In fact, this is the third straight year of getting a La Nina global weather pattern. This pattern usually brings warmer and drier weather to the state of Texas. A warming planet also plays a big role. It makes rainfall more concentrated in brief periods, and so the soil ends up being drier, reservoir levels end up being lower because of all of these other effects that are influenced by climate change. This drought is the worst since 2011, and it's bad, but it hasn't risen to the level of that year yet. The Texas summer of 2011 produced 23,000 separate wildfires, 3.8 million acres burned, $5 billion in losses to Texas farmers and 2,800 homes were destroyed. Now, October of 2011, 88% of the state was in an exceptional drought. This is the kind of drought that happens once or twice a century. The drought this year is bad, but our exceptional drought is only 21% of the state. We've had a bit more rain than we did back then and temperatures aren't quite as high, so trees are a little bit better. One of the reasons 2011 killed so many trees was because our state hadn't had a super intense dry year since 1925. The trees that are alive today are a little more accustomed to handling drought. But lake levels have been lowering too. How far are we away from water restrictions? In terms of water supplies, yeah, Travis is low. Statewide, things are, things are a little bit better on average than they were in 2011. Uh, the one area that's really, I suppose, concerned is along the Rio Grande. Falcon Reservoir is a historic lows for this time of year, and it's only going to keep dropping until, until something comes along to change the direction. And I'm sure you've heard that a hurricane or tropical storm can put an end to the drought. But that isn't completely true. A tropical system concentrates the rain only to one area. So even if we did get one or two, it would still leave the majority of the state in drought, so it doesn't really take care of things. What you really need is to have uh, several months of above normal rainfall. The first, first month or two soaks into the soil and starts greening things up again, and then we start getting runoff to replenish the water supplies after that. So when will the drought end? We could get major improvements in September and October with the right weather pattern. They are wet months, but can also be erratic when it comes to rain. If those two months are dry, we'll remain in this drought through the end of the year. And farmers across Texas are already feeling the impacts of our dry conditions. KPRC2 investigator Mario Diaz traveled to farms in Ganado, Texas to see how they're doing. It is raining corn in Jackson County. It's the only thing falling out of the sky of late. This year they're calling it a flash drought. And it's nowhere near what they have seen in the past. It's not the same as last year. I mean, not close at all. All the result of the worst drought seen in years. The damage running deep. That may be 15, 18 inches down. In terms of dollars, business is down approximately 60%. 40 cents on a dollar is better than no dollars at all. Bart Hayeski is a farmer based in the tiny town of Ganado, where dirt roads outnumber paved ones. We're standing here in Jackson County. Jackson County is probably the largest corn producing county, acres and bushels from uh, Waco South. But the state is not producing. This United States Department of Agriculture report issued on June 21st shows Texas with only 32% of its corn crop in either good or excellent condition the lowest in the nation. As we walk through here, you can see all this cracked earth. Yeah, you can go down here, look here, you can just stick your hand down there and go down as far as you wanna go down over here. But at the end of the day, you gotta have rain. Which is not what they have seen. The sun has cost us our grass. That is what, this, you, you can't put a price tag on that. Woo! Chris Davlin owns around 300 head of commercial mama cows, as he calls them. Come on, girls. Woo! The loss of grass means 
more money out of his pocket as he is required to invest in supplements to sustain his cow's diet. As a rancher, we farm for grass. And without that grass, we have to feed them everything they get. Which is the same for this corn. See, none of this will be served up on your dinner table. This is feed corn intended to bulk up chickens on poultry farms, which means the struggles are passed on and only escalate. It's the snowball effect. It just keeps getting And who pays for all that in the end? I, I would imagine the consumers going up paying for it. The mom in Katy? Yeah. Yep. The dad in Pasadena? Right. So the grandparent in Angleton. That pretty well describes it. And the landscape in those places, significantly different from the one two hours to the southwest. In town, you can always go over and turn on your water faucet and make your flowers in your yard pretty. Out here, it's just us, the good Lord and Mother Nature. And when he sees fit, we are blessed. Weather conditions are so critical for the farmers and how they make their living. So up next, we're checking in with local farmers who are finding green ways to outsmart the drought. Much more ahead, including projects aiming to cool off some of Houston's hottest areas. And we'll be answering your weather questions live. Stay with us.